Hi everybody, this is the fourth episode of writing system software. Today I changed a bit my setup in order to use an external microphone after feedbacks I received the last time in the Hacker News comments because uh, usually I used the MacBook integrated microphone but the audio, audio, audio quality was not good enough. Now I'm using this mic, however I have a cold, so the, there is another problem, but I hope this will be more understandable. Okay, today we will talk about uh, how Redis persistence works, because Redis is quite strange from this point of view. Normally, what happens in... Uh, database systems using the disk is that uh, here is our process implementing the database and it in, uh, in theory it should write directly to the disk which is split into blocks so here we'll write in one way or the, the other using maybe hem map memory mapped access to the disk or other 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 interfaces in order to write to the disk. Uh, however, normally accessing to the disk is too slow, so many systems we will implement a page cache in the middle, which is basically part of what you have here will be replicated inside the memory in order to speed up the access and then there will be a policy in order to flush things here and uh, from uh, the page table to to the disk and the other way around depending on the caching uh, semantics if we want just to speed up reads or if we have a relaxed uh, policy so that we can uh, file sync the data on disk just every second or if instead every write should be synced on disk before we return uh, an OK code to our client and so forth. But as you know, Redis is quite different because in Redis, instead, the situation that we have is that there is this process implementing Redis and it directly uses the main memory of the system in order to store the data. So basically here I have uh, some kind of key hey with its value and the value is a linked data structure like here and here and here we can, can have pointers the usual data structures memory representation and I can have key b and so forth however if the system uh, basically restarts I have to load back data uh, in memory. I don't want to lose all this content uh, from the memory if uh, there is a... if the process restarts for any reason system administrator stopping it or crash power failure, whatever. So I have to also keep one copy of what I have in memory in our disk. However, data is always accessed from the memory representation here. So disk must be just a way in order for us to load back the data. This is interesting because it means that the disk representation that we use here uh, could be sequential, does not need to be optimized for data access. It must be just uh, able to contain all the information that I need in order to restore back my uh, initial in-memory content back to in, in, in the memory when the process restarts. Uh, so, the first model that you may, uh, may think uh, using is basically, okay, this is the memory and I have my keys here, key A, 
with its value, key B with its value. I could have a, a thread jumping from one key to the other and saving it to the disk. But one problem with that is that I want my copy on disk to have a property called point in time. Basically, the data set that I store on disk must represent uh, a given instant in time, time n, and it cannot be like that a is the value that there was a, a moment time 15 and b on disk is in the moment of time 16. Because, for example, I could use a multi exec transaction and I want the two values to match the logical content of memory in a given uh, moment. Uh, so, uh, how, how I, I implement this? Because jumping from, a one, from one value to the other, while there are the clients that are sending data here and writing, uh, will not basically allow the thread to guarantee that uh, everything is pointing in time. So, what, could, what we could do is basically to do the following. Uh, as I start storing this key in memory, basically I, I tag every key with an epoch, with a, with a term. The term represents uh, basically a given uh, point in time. So, what I can do is that if the thread storing data on disk uh, started uh, when a, the term was a given value, is that as long as the term matches, uh, I can basically continue to, to, to persist on disk the, the, the value as it is, but if I found the term of some key B to be different, it means that there is some copy of B, B1, uh, here term could be term plus one. Instead I want a copy of B, B1, where the term is exactly this one of when I started to persist data in memory. If Redis would follow such a design, there is basically to implement versioning of the keys, because I need to have a copy of the key and uh, once basically this client is going to access this key uh, if to, for writing, if there is not a, already a copy, the, a copy must, must be performed. This does not need to be like a total copy of the key, because sometimes it read uh, some key like C could be a 50 million sorted set value. So I cannot really copy B because uh, otherwise I would like block the client, uh, add latency and whatever. However, there are data structures can, that can be versioned, but in general you have to implement the versioning for every data structure and sometimes versioning could require augmenting the data structure so that the memory cost uh, of the data structures in Redis will be much higher compared to today. Moreover, I will need some logging uh, system here in order to jump from one key to the other with this thread. So, instead Redis uses a completely different uh, system. In order to explain how it works, we have to understand how uh, processes represent memory internally. So this is the Redis process and this is the Redis memory. Now normally a process memory is divided into memory pages 
low level memory pages. Okay. This is, a, this is something that the kernel does for us, basically, to map, to have different ranges representing the process virtual memory space. And those uh, ranges, uh, memory segments, map to different physical memory pages. So basically, our, our process is split in uh, uh, memory pages, and by default, the memory page is for kilobytes. However, if you implement uh, huge pages, this is two megabytes, and this is not good for Redis, so disable transparent huge pages, or everything will explode. Uh, so basically, my key hey maybe uses this, 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 this for memory pages. Now, when uh, if I want to, to persist this point in time data on disk, what I can do is to use the fork system call. This is what happens when you use fork. A copy of the process P is created. P1, where, where the, the moment, at the moment of the fork, everything, every memory bit will be the same, identical, from the parent and the child process. So, the key A will still be here, and here, and here, and here, in these four pages. However, what's magical about that is that every modern kernel will not actually copy the memory, uh, the, each page from process P to process P1, otherwise this copy will be very slow, and also we will use immediately two times the memory that we were using before the fork. Instead, what happens is that each memory page, for example, this page and this page, are just references, like if they were pointers, and they point both to the same physical memory page here. Only if uh, this memory page is modified here or here, then a copy of just this for kilobytes is performed, and then this memory page is basically copied here. The, the reference here is no longer shared with the parent children, with the parent process, but it's instead now a specific new page for the child, and uh, at this point the, the memory page can be changed. So, <coughs> sorry, what it means basically is that let's zoom just in these four memory pages here where we have our key A. So we fork and we create basically A1 in the child process memory, and it's exactly the same. Now, a client C arrives and touches in it touches just a single item of maybe this hash imagine that a is like an hash data type in redis and we just modify with uh, a command a single memory page here then it will be uh, duplicated in the in the parent process or in the uh, child process a copy will be made and uh, here th this copy will remain the old one and here instead the new one will be created with the modification however the forked uh, process will still see the memory as it was in the moment of the fork call so basically, at this point, it becomes 
trivial to do what, what we want to do. So basically we have our Redis process and it has its memory and I call fork here and another process is created, P1, that will see the memory as it was in the time in Tn when the fork was called. So this process will just have to iterate every key without any logging, without nothing, the simplest code possible, and save this representation on disk. Later, when Redis is restarted, we will load back this representation in the memory in order to create back our memory content. And that's it, basically. However, um, the problem with this uh, uh, approach is that the additional memory that we use uh, depends basically on how many keys or how many memory pages we will touch here while the fork is active. Because every memory page that we touch in the in the parent process will be duplicated. So every time we will going to spend more four kilobyte of memory. If our workload is very, very uh, biased and touch just a small percentage of key, then this copy on write is called, this, this mechanism is called copy on write because the memory page is copied when it is modified, the copy and write memory usage will be low. But if we have a usage pattern that touches everything while the fork is active, we can end spending two times the memory that the original process had. However, this is an extreme case because actually uh, the function of the memory used is, depends on two things the time that the parent process will take in order to dump the information on disk and the number of pages, the rate at which pages are touched in the parent process. Because even if I'm touching a lot of pages here, if this process of saving is very fast, it will terminate before we touched and have to duplicate too many pages here. So it depends. However, Redis at the end of the uh, persistence uh, process will print a log entry saying you like, I used this amount of memory of copy and write in order to persist. So you can uh, basically, based, uh, based on your use case, you can uh, uh, basically try to understand how many additional memory you need. But in the worst cases, like double memory usage. Um, there is a problem with all that. Basically, I have my parent process and I have my child process. Let's say that it's acceptable to duplicate the memory page when the memory page is modified because there is some write command touching the key stored here. But in real world systems, sometimes you have to modify pages even because you are reading from the pages. For example, uh, Redis, especially in the past, this is no, lo no longer a big problem, used to represent uh, used the R object structures in order to represent the strings. So those were basically, uh, th this structure is still used, but uh, it's no longer used in order to represent single items in aggregated data types. So an hash is no longer a set of Redis objects. But when it was like that, because these objects are reference counted, uh, what happened is that in order to reply to a client doing like, uh, I don't know, like uh, S members, 
ds members command uh, takes all the items inside a set and returns it to the client client C what happened was that every object in order to end in the output uh, buffer of the client had the uh, object reference count incremented by one and this increment will touch basically a memory page and one here and one here possibly uh, the set items were allocated in different moments in the time of the Redis process life. So basically, I will have an object in this page, an object here in this page, another element of the set is here. So basically, just to serve the S member command, I had to touch many different pages and duplicate them in the, in the process. Now, instead, what happens in, uh, in modern versions of Redis is that uh, basically we, we have an output buffer in the client and we just copy the content of the object in the output buffer. So, we no longer touch the ref count. Actually, uh, in most data structures, the representation is no longer even uh, uh, an error object structure, it's just a string with a len and a, and a buffer and it's just two fields like that it's sds library we just copy because the time we spend copying is not a big deal compared to what we save calling write the write system call in the uh, larger buffer avoiding too many context switches Instead, if you have many link, a linked list of small objects, you have to call write many times. And note that the vectorized versions of write will not help with that because usually they are implemented like inside the libc and will actually call write multiple times or whatever. So basically, we at this point copy and avoid this copy, copy on write problem. There is another problem which is. Um, hash tables uh, so uh, in Redis hash tables during rehashing we cannot block for a long time because uh, otherwise to rehash in a blocking way will stop Redis because it's mostly single threaded uh, so we actually have two hash tables inside every single logical hash table and the rehashing is performed in an incremental way. So basically when uh, my hash table becomes two full, the brackets are too densely populated, uh, rehashing happens in a table which is larger and incrementally we move things from here to here and we rehash the hash table. However, all this is uh, copy and write if there is a fork right now. So what happens instead is that basically uh, basically inside uh, server.c we can see the incremental rehashing of the main dictionary hash tables and it happens only under the condition that the child PID uh, of RTB saving is uh, minus one, which means there is no fork active, and also the AOF rewriting, which uses the same system, is not happening right now. And if uh, there is no fork active, uh, we can perform the uh, incremental uh, rehash. Uh, otherwise, we wait for the fork to finish and uh, do it, uh, because uh, otherwise we would easily uh, use QX memory without even much write pressure in case, in case the, the main uh, dictionary hash table of the database is rehashing to a larger table. So basically, this is uh, the things that we have to, to, to consider during in order to avoid uh, uh, copy and write. Okay, one last thing is... Um, uh, okay, so basically, 
what we there is to, to, to take home from all this is that this experience with using a so dumb low level system in order to handle Redis persistence was extremely positive in the latest like 10 years. Redis is probably the, the, the only big system that I'm uh, aware of to use this peculiar uh, persistence model. But basically what you get is that you have a data structure that's very complex, like a radix tree or whatever you want, and it's it's um, it's in represented the, in very complex ways inside these memory pages. This point in time persistence uh, mechanism does not care about what are the details inside here. If there are nodes, compressed nodes, whatever the complexity. I touch this page and I duplicate only this page. I touch this page and I duplicate just this page. Uh, of course, the more locality uh, an, uh, a data structure has, uh, the better it will work from this point of view. The less memory pages will be uh, affected. Instead, if a representation uses a lot of bits here and here and here and here and here, in order to represent a single logical item, then I have to touch multiple pages. So also locality is a, is a good thing. But it's like magical because you abstract away versioning to a lower level level layer. That's the page table basically uh, that maps the processes the process memory. Um, one problem with this approach is that fork can take time. You may wonder why, because we said that when I fork, I don't really du duplicate the memory pages here. They are just references to the same physical page, this one. So, why fork can be slow? Because if this Basically, the mapping of the virtual address to the actual memory pages is stored in some other external memory called the page table. And when I, when I fork, I want to duplicate the page table of the process because when I allocate, after the, the copy of write, I allocate this new page here, I want to modify our process specific page table in order to say okay now this is the this is the new reference of the page uh, the page table is a small fraction of the process memory but if i have here 100 uh, gigabytes of memory then this will be uh, will introduce uh, some milliseconds latency depending on the on the uh, on the speed of the CPU of the server and if it's virtualized or not and if it is using uh, Xen or other virtualization uh, uh, systems this could uh, like take uh, I don't know if the process is very large like even uh, like I don't know 500 milliseconds or something like that so basically uh, with uh, RDB RDB, you may not want to use very large processes. Instead, you can use AOF when this fork must be performed only when the log needs to be uh, rewritten and not uh, at uh, fixed time intervals like it happens with RDB. So it's basically a trade-off between uh, different things. Um, okay, uh, final note is uh, how this is also useful for AOF. When Redis uses, uh, when Redis is u uses AOF, I have still my memory as main data repository, but I also use a log file where each command is logged. However, at, this point, uh, at some point, this file will become very very big because it's a log and if I 
continue to send things here. I need to, to rewrite the log in order to compact it. And so we use the same system, we fork, create the process P1, and the process will use the content of memory here in order to create basically the smallest AOF representation possible just for each key we will emit the smallest amount of commands needed in order to create back the key when we load back this in memory and when we finished we substitute this AOF with the old one and append what's missing, uh, what we logged during the, the fork time. Okay, well this is all uh, and uh, so bye and see you the next time. I cannot make an end.